Hey guys, how you doing? Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I know you're busy people. There's so many things you could be doing right now, but you're here, right here, right now with me. So I'm going to do my best to give you 60 minutes, which are going to save you time, save you money and reduce risk for your business. Because we're going to go through the 60 minute business plan. This is what it's all about tonight. We are a group of entrepreneurs here together tonight interacting live there'll be a q a session tonight as well so i'm really looking forward to that looking forward to your questions hey we're all on this journey together we're all entrepreneurs at different stages. so some of you i know have started businesses some of you are planning to start a business some of you are just thinking about it wherever you are it doesn't matter you're in the right place here tonight what i'm going to do is give you 60 minutes of real value help you understand the five steps you need to go through for your business plan save you time save you money and reduce risk how about that that's what it's about tonight so if you interact with me it helps me out give you a better webinar how about that so cool we've got everybody from all around the world tonight we've got where have we got konbanwa japan well i'm in japan some of you are from Japan tonight, that's fantastic. Apakabar to Indonesia. You guys from Jakarta are amazing. You always turn up in numbers. And where else do we have? London. Well, UK. We don't get a lot of people from the UK, but that is so cool. I'm from the UK. Glad to see you UK guys here tonight representing the entrepreneurs. Hello, Indonesia. Hello, Japan. Who else do we have? Hungary. Budapest, man, fantastic city. Love Budapest. Hey guys, if you ever get a chance, go to Budapest. It's a fantastic city, especially if you're an entrepreneur. There's a lot of activity there. Who else we have? More from Jakarta, Indonesia, Bandung, Indonesia. There you go. Indonesia. Love Indonesia. I was in Indonesia last month. Last month I was in Bali. I love Indonesia. One of my favorite places in the world. Just absolutely love it. Love Bali. Love Java. Love Jakarta. Padang food, fantastic. Who else do we have? Hong Kong, fantastic. Love Hong Kong, one of my favorite cities in the world. Was in Hong Kong just last month. Great to see you guys from Hong Kong. So here we look. Here's the thing, right? We're all from different countries in the world, but we share so much in common. We share more in common with the people in our own country. And that is we're all on this journey as entrepreneurs. We are the outsiders. We are the outsiders. We are a small minority in our world, right? You've got to understand that as an entrepreneur, you're an outsider. You are the minority. You are taking the least comfortable route in your journey, right? You know, I started my business 20 years ago, right? I started my first business 20 years ago, and everybody said to me, around me, nobody was an entrepreneur, and everybody says, you can't do it for these reasons. You can't do it because you have no experience. You can't do it because you have no money. You can't do it because you're too young, whatever. And now they tell me they can't do it because I'm too old. They can't do it because you've got too much experience, whatever. It doesn't matter. Everybody's going to tell that you can't do it. So you are in the minority. That's why it's fantastic that you're here tonight because we're all entrepreneurs on this journey and we share this common kindred spirit, which is the entrepreneurial spirit. It doesn't matter if you speak Bahasa Indonesia or you speak English or you speak Mandarin a lot in common so I'm so privileged that you are here tonight because we're going to do this tonight we are going to talk about the 60 minute business plan so let's get started as I said we're going to do a Q&A session at the end but let's talk about what we need to think about so you're starting a business so much to think about I know it's really confusing I know some of you are starting a business and you're still at the idea stage and you're thinking, well, what the hell do I think about? What do I do? Where do I focus? And some of you have started a business and you've got so many things that you need to think about. So the key here is where do you start? And what happens is, is you get into this business planning phase, right? And all this stuff here, it's a lot of shit that you have to deal with as an entrepreneur, right? You know, executive summary, company background. You've got to write all these business plan nonsense, right? What I want to do tonight is just kind of get rid of all that for you. I want to help you focus on what you need to focus on in 60 minutes. 
60 minutes is all you need to be focused on for a business plan. So these 60 minutes is all about what you need to know to plan a business. Whether you started a business, whether you're thinking about launching a business, I'm going to give you what I've learned from 20 years of experience in 60 minutes. How about that? That's a good investment. That is better than watching the TV tonight, right? How about that? Agree? Cool. Excellent. So if you give me your attention, I will give you my best tonight in the next 60 minutes. All right. So the key here is the 60 minute business plan. And to do this, to give you the 60 minute business plan, what I want to do is teach you the five steps you need to go through to successfully launch a new business. Now, you may have an idea which is not yet a business. So you need to go through these steps anyway. You may already have a business. You need to still go through these steps and make sure that you've done everything properly. It's kind of like building up, right? You've got to build one layer and the next layer goes on the next layer. If you get the first layer wrong, then it kind of, it's real wobbly and the whole thing falls down, right? So the five steps, all about focus and method tonight. So I want to share with you what the focus should be starting your business in the plan and what the method should be for launching your business. That is the next 60 minutes, all right? And this is what I teach in the UpSchool Zero to One Business Launch course. And I'll tell you a little bit later on about this course if you're interested in going deeper into this because we've just got 60 minutes tonight. No, you can't learn everything in 60 minutes. There's so much more. I want to give you the top, the cream tonight, and then you can drill down later on, right? And also, if you stick around to the end, I'll show you how you can download a free file. If you want an audio file, some of you got the audio file already because you signed up real early. Well done. Congratulations. Some of you haven't got that yet. Stick around to the end. Free audio file. It's like 10-minute summary of what we're going to learn tonight. But it won't replace what we're going to learn tonight, so don't go away. Stick around to the end because we've still got a Q&A session. You're going to ask me some real tough questions. Put me on the spot. Make me work for my – sing for my supper tonight, all right? Okay, so the focus should be, if you are in business, your number one focus should be getting your first paying customer. I don't want you to focus on anything else apart from that. If you are thinking about writing business plans, and, you know, raising money, finding an office, thinking about who your developer partner should be, designing a logo, forget about that. I want you to focus on this paying customer. That is it. And that is the key to the zero to one method that I want to talk about with you tonight is focus on your first paying customer. Everything else is secondary. You know what? I mentor startups. I invest in startups. I work a lot with entrepreneurs. I run a mastermind with some great entrepreneurs in it, people starting out in the business. And this always comes back to this issue. Focus. What are you spending your time on from the moment you get up to the moment you go to bed at night as an entrepreneur, everything is taken up with that business, right? So if you haven't started your business yet and you're thinking about not being coming an entrepreneur, you can't get all your waking time to the business. Don't do it. But if you are, make sure that what you're doing is the right focus. Focus on that paying customer. I want to talk about that tonight. And the key here is to ship. ASAP, ship, ASAP, ship means get your product into the hands of a paying customer. So if you close this webinar now and walk away because you've had too much of me for nine minutes, all right, what I want to impart to you right now, one thing is this nothing happens until you ship. So if you're in business, your main focus should be shipping, nothing else, everything else is secondary. So if you're busy doing other stuff, rethink. So what we're going to look at tonight is the business plan taking you from zero, which is idea. A lot of you are at the idea stage. Two, one, paying customer. Zero to one, idea to paying customer. That's what it's all about. Because if you can get a paying customer, you can get 100 paying customers. You can get 10,000 paying customers. There is a big gap between zero and one. And that's what I want to talk about planning tonight and reducing your burn rate. Burn rate is how much money you are using up on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So 
if you're starting a business, you should not be going out thinking about getting an office. You should not be going out thinking about getting a PR company. Your goal is to keep it absolutely lean as possible. Work from home. Don't hire anybody until you have to. Keep it maximum lean, minimum outgoings, because whilst it makes business sense to be more profitable by being lean, it also makes sense for you as an entrepreneur. It's less So what I want to teach you tonight is how to be ultra lean in your planning, okay? So let's start. Let's do this. Five steps to successfully launch your business. I'm going to teach you these five steps, okay? If you have any questions, put them into the chat box down there. What I'll do is do my best to answer those at the end, okay? So your first step should be mindset. Get your mindset right before you do anything. And what I mean by this, there is a whole bunch of thinking, which is a real legacy from the 20th century, all right, which is all about going out, getting a good business plan, raising money, building a factory or an office or a team. What I want to show you tonight is that rather than planning, you should be focusing on launching. So don't go out and follow this 20th century model of doing business, which is to go out and spend weeks, months, years planning your business. We've got to get over it, right? We have the technology, we have the business models, we have the know-how to launch fast, launch fast, which basically means to launch in days, weeks, not days, versus, sorry, weeks and months. So, for example, one of the things I talk about with the, the entrepreneurs I work with in the mastermind is you've got to get your launch date right down. So I don't know about you guys here tonight. I don't know how long you're taking to launch your business or how long you took to launch your business or how long you think it will take to launch your business. But let me tell you this. If you're thinking it's going to take weeks or months to launch your business or even years, you are doubling down on the risk of your business. That is 20th century thinking when it comes to business. And you know what? When I started looking into this years ago and I started really pulling apart the way that I thought about business, this was like really uncomfortable. Because you know, I had a very successful business from a 20th century business model and I had to rethink this internet business model, right? And I tell you, internet business model means everything right now. It doesn't just mean, you know, online marketing type business. You could be selling cosmetics, you could be setting up a consultancy, you could be running a, a tourism business, whatever. Everything is touched by the internet. And you should be spending days, not weeks and months, launching your business. So what I want to show you tonight is how you can do this in days, not weeks and months. Okay. So let's do this because that will save you a lot of time, a lot of risk, a lot of money, and heartache. You know, I've seen it Let's take, a, let's take 30 seconds out of it. I have seen entrepreneurs spend months and maybe even years with their businesses. And I just want to size is, hey, look, guys, you've got to get this right down to days and weeks. You're stuck in that 20th century model of doing business. And, you know, I see in that every time an entrepreneur spends an extra month planning, 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 they double down on the risk of doing that business. So eventually when they launch in a year's time, wow, the risk is compiled, it's compounded so many times that if they don't get it right after a year, wow, that's a big failure. And it's very difficult to go back to your friends and family and say, hey, look, you know, I spent a year planning this, I burnt up all my money, you know, I gave up a good job, I launched my business and it flopped. That's really hard to deal with, all right? So we want to avoid that tonight. Keep it lean and learn to bootstrap. And I want to tell you a little bit about what bootstrapping is tonight. Bootstrapping is essentially keeping it lean. Minimum amount of money, minimum amount of time to launch your business. Because that means if you can launch fast, less money and less risk. So it's all about tonight, okay. I want to impress upon you this idea that if you don't have a paying customer yet, you are not a business. That's a lot. That's hard for a lot of people to get on board. They think they have a business. But if you don't have paying customers, you don't have a business yet. You're just an experiment. 
Okay, so the way I want you to think about your business is it's just an experiment, it's just a test, right? It's a project, you're testing ideas until you get a paying customer. You don't have a business, so don't think about it as a business, just think about it as a project, an experiment, a test, and keep it light, keep it lean. And the more experiments you make, the better. You just got to, I want to show you tonight the importance of testing, split testing, A B testing. These may be unfamiliar to you, but you've got to get familiar with these terms like test, 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 test your ideas, test your product, test your marketing. The days when you could just basically put a product out there and throw money at the marketing, those are gone. Very, very different today. So I want to show you in the plan what you need to focus on. So let's get on. You know, let's spend less time planning because this is like a moving bicycle. You know, you've got to get on the bike and you've got to pedal it. It's easier to steer when you're pedaling it. It's very difficult to steer a stationary bike, right? So it's kind of like a business. The sooner you get pedaling, the sooner you start putting stuff out there, the sooner you start testing, the easier it is to move that bicycle. And that's kind of like business. And here's the main thing. One of the biggest that I see entrepreneurs fall into is this, is that all of their assumptions about business are wrong. Every assumption that I have about a business that I launch ends up being wrong, okay? So you might think, why the hell do you launch a business, Graham, if everything is wrong? Well, it's not all wrong. It's just kind of wrong. You think that your customers will like this product. You think they will pay X for your product. You think that they will like this kind of marketing. Everything is wrong when you actually go out and do it. So the key here is to spend minimum amount of time on assumptions and a maximum amount of time on getting stuff out there. So if you tell me that you have an idea, I'm not interested. Go out and find a paying customer. Then let's talk about your business. Until that point, it's just an experiment. It doesn't matter. All your assumptions about the idea are meaningless. Not what you want to hear. But I'm just kind of giving you a friendly slap with a smile on my face. All right? That's kind of what we need here, right? You need somebody to tell you you've got to push this. You've got to push this out. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't keep behind the computer. Plan, 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 plan. Tonight, I want to show you how you've got to get out there. All right? This is what it's about, the moment of truth in business, the moment of truth, this is where it happens. You know what? If you think that people will be interested in your product, this is something that I've learned the hard way, right? If you think people are interested in your product, doesn't matter. Until they open their wallet and pay, nothing matters. Nothing you have in terms of research is meaningful. Until that person pays, for your product. Everything they say about your product is invalid. I know that that hurts. That's difficult because you've talked to all these people about your product. You've got all this kind of feedback. You've done this research. Doesn't matter. You know, until people pay, doesn't matter. I know this, this is tough, right? It's kind of like asking people, I've said this before in a previous webinar, are you interested in having a Ferrari? Everybody's interested in having a Ferrari. It's going to look really good sitting on your drive, like a red Ferrari sitting there, right? But how many people actually have a Ferrari? Not many. And that's it. There's a big difference between interest and people who are willing to open their wallet and pay something. So don't get seduced by interest. You talk to people, you think this is a good idea, it doesn't matter. Key is get it. Put it out there. Put your product out there. Get it in terms and see if they're willing to pay for it. And I'll show you how you can do that tonight without being such a big issue. Like you can do that in very, very small steps. So the second step in your business plan absolutely has to be validation of your ideas. What are we talking about here? You know, if you think you have an idea and you are passionate about this idea, hey, look, you know, I've got this idea. I want to create this business for cyclists because I love cycling, right? I'm really passionate about cycling and therefore it's going to work. You know, that is the problem that ends up with so many entrepreneurs spending months, years on a project, making no money, um, ending up burning through all their savings, ending up, you know, 
I've seen people lose marriages as a result of failed businesses, and that's tough, and families as a result, because they thought that an idea plus passion was enough to be successful. Absolutely not. That we have to work out. We've got to take the bullshit out of ideas, and I want to show you how you do this. This is the passion versus never give up trap. If people say to you this, this, the formula for success with your business plan is be passionate, never give up, it's bullshit. Because absolutely every successful entrepreneur was passionate and never gave up. And absolutely every unsuccessful entrepreneur was passionate and never gave up. And that was the problem because they thought that that was enough to be successful. You say, well, I've got this idea, I'm going to work. 18 hours a day on this because I absolutely am passionate about it. I'm gonna go 18 hours a day. I'm never gonna give up. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do this until I absolutely, you know, I work myself into the grave, right? And often they do. And that's the problem because that is not the formula for success. This is a myth. And you've got to take that out. Let's put that myth aside tonight and focus on what it's about. Stress test your ideas. So I want to save you time and money and risk tonight by showing you how to stress test. I won't go into the process of stress testing, but I'll introduce it to you. All right. And this is what I talk a lot about in the course about how to stress test ideas. But tonight I want to introduce it to you. OK, because I don't want you to go out. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. You're an entrepreneur. I don't want you to go out and follow your dream and never give up and be passionate about something and spend months and years working on a project that just won't work okay and i've seen it i've seen it so many times i want to save you that time i want to save your money save your time save your relationships save your sanity by showing you do this first stress test because that will save you so much time all right it's like building that first layer of the business that foundation if you're building a foundation on sand doesn't matter how good your building is it's going to sink, all right? So if the idea is not good, your building is going to sink. So I want to show you tonight that you've got to stress test. So shortlist your ideas and stress test them. Stress test basically means to hit your ideas, like to break them. Well, keep hitting them until they break. Test them with your questions and tools. And use all the tools that you have available. I talk about these in the course, what tools you can use to stress test an idea. Google AdWords is one example. So I talked about this in a previous webinar, how you could use Google AdWords to stress test an idea. But there are many, many other ways you can stress test an idea. In the course, I talk about there's eight questions and four tools that you can use. Many, many more questions and tools to stress test your ideas. You're kind of hitting your idea until it breaks. And if it doesn't break, that's the idea you want to build on, all right? And you also got to get in the process of sharing your ideas. What I want you to avoid is this, this sort of mindset, which is 20th century mindset, which is kind of like, I don't want to share your idea, my idea with you, because you may take my idea and then steal it, all right? Or some people go around and say, yeah, I'm in stealth mode, because that sounds kind of cool. I'm in stealth mode, which means like I'm kind of at this networking event. I'm kind of listening, but I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm just observing. I'm soaking everything up. I'm just kind of in the corner lurking, not telling you about your, my ideas. See, the key here is that ideas are important, but it doesn't matter. If somebody takes your idea, it doesn't matter. Forget it. The key here is execution because there are a million ideas out there, and very, very, very few of them are, are successful. And actually, if somebody is doing your idea already, that's good. That's a good way. They are going out there and testing your idea and seeing if there's a market for it, for it and using their money and time to establish that, doing the market research for you. So don't worry. Go out and share your ideas. Talk to people. Go to events. Go to meetups. Talk about your ideas. Be open. And you will get really good feedback. Because you know what? When you hear somebody tell you your idea back to you, suddenly this light goes on. And, ah, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know what? Some of the best insights I've had with business ideas in the planning stage is when I'm in the taxi on the way home. It's not at the meetup because you're blah, 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 talking, listening, talking, listening. 
And when you go home in the taxi, it's like, bing, the light goes on, right? You only get that through talking to people. Sitting behind the computer screen is not enough, right? You don't get it sitting behind the computer. You've got to get out there and you've got to talk to people. You've got to share ideas. So part of your plan should be getting out there, sharing my, sharing your ideas, and then trying to break the hell out of them, right? And this is the stress test. Boom, boom, boom. Hit them with these questions. Hit them with these tools until they break. And if they don't break, fantastic. Take the best ones and niche down on your best ideas. So for example, like my cycling idea, that's not strong enough. I could break that down, put it through Google AdWords, Google Keyword Tool, and then get a really niche understanding. And if you were at the webinar last week, remember we talked, two weeks ago I think it was, we talked about my cycling idea, we used Google AdWords, we went in there, niched it down, and I started looking at knee pain. Knee pain for cyclists. That was like a really strong search term on Google Keyword Tool. So starting off with this idea about cycling, you know, I'm into cycling, it's my passion. Niche it down, stress test it, end up with this focus on knee pain for cyclists. So that was really interesting. That is how you can niche down on a bit. Start with a short list, stress test it, niche down on the winners. And you know what? Don't get worried. If you don't have a full idea, if you don't have a strong idea, it doesn't matter. Just start the business anyway because everything's going to change. Get out there. Start your idea. will get better. Back to the moving bicycle. Get on the bike. Pedal. So much easier than just kind of standing there and wobbling. That's where we're at. So part three of your plan should be identifying customer pain. What I want to tell you, what I want to share with you in this section is the importance of not focusing on your product. Okay, let me give you an example. Here's a mobile phone, all right? Every single person has got one of these in the world, all right? Now, if you were selling a mobile phone, maybe you would focus on what? You would focus on the features like the interface, the applications, form factor, all those kind of technical terms. But you know what? Why do people actually buy mobile phones? It's not because of these things. The reason people buy mobile phones is because fear. Fear is a major motivator, and you've got to lock into fear as a motivator to buy your product. And the reason why people buy mobile phones out of fear is the fear of missing out, the fear of looking stupid, all different kinds of fears. It's an emotional buy. You know, one of the things I talk about in the course is don't think about your product in terms of the features or what it does or the physical elements of the product. Or if you have a service, don't think about it in those terms because it doesn't matter. Think about it. This is like an iceberg, all right? This is what I talk about in the course. There's an iceberg. 10% of the iceberg is above the water. 90% of the iceberg is below the water. It's the 90% below the water that you, as a business owner, need to focus on. You really need to understand, okay? Let me talk a little bit about this now, what I'm talking about, why emotion is key to you being able to have a successful business and locking it into the emotion of your customers, not the physical nature of your product or service. So before we start, one of the key things here is, one of the key things that uh, entrepreneurs get lost on is this idea about being original you know i hear people say ah oh, yeah somebody else is already doing that idea or you can't do that amazon's doing it or facebook's doing it or these guys are doing it you know what if somebody else is doing your business already that is the best validation for your idea out there if somebody comes to me you know, seeking investment and i do invest in startups and have invested in startups both I failed a lot, but I've also been successful. Okay. And somebody comes to me and pitches me an idea. One of the first things I ask is who's the competition? If they can't tell me who the competitor is, I'm not interested. Because if there are no competition, if there are no competitors for that business, I'm not interested in investing in that business. You know why? Because it's a massive risk. If you go out and build a business where you are the first person to do this, you better have a lot of money. You better make sure your name is Elon Musk or Richard Branson because 
you need a heck of a lot of money and you need a heck of a lot of help to build a whole market. You're going out and you're educating a market, you're showing people how to use a product or how to use a service for the first time. You know, you're educating people about what these things mean and so on. Forget it. Don't bet on being original. It's so much easier to copy an idea that works and make it better. So think about that. If you're struggling with this idea on how it can be original, don't worry. That is how you can easily get lost. Today, you've got to focus on what already works. Let somebody else go out and do all the market research for you. Let somebody else go out and spend all their money educating customers. Let somebody else go out and tell you what works and what doesn't work. Don't waste your money in doing that. Copy what works and out execute. So what you need to focus on when it comes to ideas and pain and solutions and the emotion is problems that people have in their everyday lives. You know what? You don't need to be Facebook and that is okay. You know, one of the things I see entrepreneurs get lost on is this idea that they need to change the world. They need to have this massive idea Billions of people, forget it. Don't don't get lost. If you're here tonight, you're in the wrong place. If you're thinking that you need to go out and change the world and have billions of customers and so on, you know what? 99.999% of successful businesses out there don't change the world. They just do something very well, okay? And they solve a problem that people like you and me have in their everyday lives, okay? So one of the, go back to the ideas, the stress test. One of the questions that I ask on the course about stress testing is, does this problem, or sorry, does your product or does your service, whatever it is, solve a problem that you have in your everyday life? I'm not talking about, you know, you had this problem once. It's a problem that happens all the time. If it doesn't, it's going to be very difficult for you to make this business successful. Because you've got to be passionate about this stuff. You've got to be thinking about this thing all the time. All right. You've got to have real insights on a daily basis about this problem that you have. Let's say, for example, go back to my cycling idea. You know, one of the problems that I have is knee pain. That's a problem that I have on my everyday life. So if somebody can fix that for me, fantastic. I will pay for that. Actually, I'll make a business out of that because I really understand knee pain more than anything else, right? So does this solve a problem that you have in your everyday lives? If it doesn't, that is already failing the stress test. That's kind of breaking. There's, there's cracks in the ideas already. So you've got to focus on what's broken. What doesn't work in the market already? Make it better. That is what you are here to do as an entrepreneur. You're not here to change the world. Just focus on what doesn't work and make it better. And you are here to give solutions, not products. Okay? You're not selling a mobile phone. You're selling a solution to loneliness. Think about it in those terms. Okay? Because if you can connect on those terms, it's going to be so much easier for you to market your business, grow your business, price your business the right way. You're not in the game of commodity. You're not right at the bottom thinking about the cheapest thing possible. You're out there selling things that people really want, okay? Because the key here, and this, you know, I've been in marketing for 15 years. People buy on emotion and justify with logic. Think about this. People buy on emotion and justify with logic. So your customers, your clients, they will buy because of what they feel here in the stomach. So that's an English phrase. We talk about emotion from the stomach. All right, not the heart, the stomach, gut feeling. But when you ask them, uh, why did you buy this mobile phone, Graham? Well, I bought this mobile phone because it's a nice design and it was on offer. That's not why I bought it. That's what I'm telling you. That's why I'm ju justifying with logic. I don't want to say really why I bought this mobile phone because I'll look really stupid in front of you. The reason I bought this mobile phone is that I want to look really cool. I want to impress the guys. That, there's this guy at the work who's got a new mobile phone. I want to have this mobile phone to really piss him off because I want to look. I want to be the top dog in the office with this mobile phone. All these kind of stupid ideas that people have, really emotional stuff. That's why people don't tell you 
about these things, all right? That is the real reason why people buy. People buy on emotion and justify with logic. So when it comes down to developing your product, your service, you've got to get to the emotional level. You've got to get out there and develop relationships with customers and people that you know in your network because the better your relationships, go out and talk to people. Spend, have a cup of coffee with somebody you know who may benefit from your product or service. Hey, I want to meet in Starbucks. Let's talk. I want to talk to you about my product. Cool. 15 minutes, cup of coffee. Tell me a little bit about that problem you're having. You know what? If that person trusts you, if you can develop a relationship with them, they'll give you real insights. They won't say, yeah, 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 no, I got this because it was an offer. They're going to give you real insights. They're going to tell you the stupid stuff. Like I said, you know, I don't want to look cool. I don't want to be left out. I don't know what's stupid. The emotional stuff. That's the stuff under the water. That is what, if you talk to an advertiser, they say, don't sell the benefit. You know, the benefit of this product is it's cool, all that kind of stuff. You know, they, advertisers say, sell the benefit of the benefit. Think about that with your product or service. Don't sell the benefit. Sell the benefit of the benefit. Go one stage down. Think about the emotion. And when you talk and when you put your marketing out there, when you write your copy on your website, so your sales page on your website, your marketing emails, I'll talk about email in a minute, all that stuff, I want you to do this and think of that person that you are talking to. So there is one person you know in your network, in your ecosystem, that you know you've interacted with, and they want your product. You know they want your product because, well, you know, you've interacted with them. This is the solution to their problem, right? So when you write your emails or write your web page, I want you to think about that person. You are writing it for that person, okay? So I'm writing this web page for Susan. She's in my head. Susan is somebody I know in my network. She's an entrepreneur, and I'm building this service for entrepreneurs. So when I talk to Susan, I do it through the web page. I don't actually say, hey, Susan, da 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 but I'm writing as if I'm talking to her directly. So name your customer. That's a really key tool. It's something that advertisers taught me years ago in marketing. Name your customer. Because once you give a person a name, they come alive. Okay? So don't just talk about people like customers. Think about Susan, all right? Or whoever your customer is, that person in your network you've interacted with. So when you write your emails, hey, Susan, I've got this really good idea for you. It's, hey, it could be anybody else, right? It could be anybody else's name, but you're running it. You're talking to Susan directly. You know what? When Susan receives that email, she's like, wow. It's like Graham's talking to me directly. He's like reaching in and talking to me and, you know, touching my heart. And that's kind of the emotion level you want to get to in your plan. Talk to him directly. All right. So step four in the five stages. We've only got two left, okay? Build your MVP. So important, MVP, minimum viable product. I go really deep into this in the course. I don't have a lot of time to talk about MVPs tonight. I've done a whole webinar on MVPs and hopefully that was useful. Um, minimum viable product is this. What you see on the screen is a donut, all right? So, all right, you've got this idea about your product or service. It's kind of like this. It's quite fancy. It's not just a donut, it's a donut with pink topping. I don't know. What the hell do they make that pink topping? What is that pink stuff? I don't know. Icing, pink icing. That sure as hell ain't natural, but it looks good. It tastes good. And then you put those hundreds of thousands on top and it looks all kind of cool. That's your product. That's your sort of final product vision. It's up here somewhere, right? The product vision is up here. Now, what you have to do is start with the MVP, which is like the most basic version of your donut that's a customer is willing to pay for. A customer will buy that donut for sure because that's a really basic donut. That's a cheap donut. No frills donut. Somebody will buy that donut for sure. And what you want to do is start with that and then build it up. You know what? If somebody buys that donut, next week you're going to have that donut and then maybe a little bit of icy pop. And build it up. Build it up. That's what MVPs are about. So it's kind of like this approach to building a product. You've got to take this approach to building a product. 
this is your final donut, so to speak. That's where you want to go. But you've got to kind of start here. Somebody would pay for this version of your product or service. And then when they do, you make it better, you make it better, and eventually you work it up to this. And at every point, you know what? You're getting feedback. You know, I didn't like that donut. Didn't like those hundreds of thousands that you put on top of the donut. Didn't like the icing. Change it. Don't like pink. All that kind of stuff. That changes how you think about your product and service. Remember I talked about assumptions. One of the biggest mistakes you can make as an entrepreneur is to go in and assume what the customer wants. Because until they open their wallet and pay, everything you assume about what they want will be wrong. So when you put your donut out there, you don't know what they really want from a donut until they start paying for that, all right? And that can apply to a service, a consultancy, a product, whatever. An application doesn't matter. Same principle. So MVP works, and this is what I talk about in the course, but I talk a little bit about it now. It's, you know, there's so many businesses out that are built on top of MVP practices. So you know, Dropbox is one example. There's a case study in the course about this. But what you have to know is this. When you're developing your product, it's a constant cycle. Okay, You don't just build a product and that's it. You know, That is the wrong way to do things. You don't spend, what you shouldn't be doing is spending a year building a product or a month or six months building a product and then that's the end of it. What you should be doing instead is building a product in days. All right, And that might scare you. This is what we talked about at the beginning of the webinar. Build a product in days, push it out there, even half finished, doesn't matter, push it out there, get some feedback, get some traction with the customers where they bite, and then you can build it up from there. So much better to do it that way than to spend months and years. Here's my donut, guys. Oh my God, didn't I tell you I hate pink? That's what you don't want after a year of developing. You don't want to be developing a pink donut for a year only the customer to turn around and say, I absolutely hate pink. You don't want that. What you do want to do, put the blank donut out there. Hey guys, what do you think? You like it? Yeah, I like the dough and the donut. Now let's talk about what we can put on top. That's the next step. That's the MVP development, real simple. I go into a lot more about this in the course. Donuts, that's what it's all about. So the key here is, as an entrepreneur, is to get into the habit of testing and measuring, 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 measuring. So one of the things that doesn't come across from the 20th century model of, build, of business is measuring. One of the things we've learned in the last few years is how to measure this stuff, how to put a product out there, how to measure customer interaction with this. So you can do this very, very basic stuff. You know, how many people buy things, how many people click on things, these kind of metrics that you can get you can get from your interaction customer. And there are many, many ways that you can do this. And there are established ways of doing this. You've got to get into the habit of doing this. If you're not measuring, you're not growing. And the key here is split, test, everything. So if you're sending out an email, split test it. If you're building a product, split test it. Whatever. What I mean by split test, I mean split testing is a whole webinar in itself. Okay. But what I mean by split testing is, is something really basic. A B, two versions of whatever you decide to do, give it to the customer. Customer one gets A, customer two gets B. Which one do people like best? Okay, very, very simple. That's split testing. Many, many different ways of doing this. You can do it with email, you can do it with your products, whatever. Do it with your landing page, do it with your sales page. You should split test your sales page constantly. Split test the layout of your page, split test the words on your page. Keep doing this all the time. Make it a habit. And you know what? Because you don't know the answer. You don't know. You don't. This is assumptions again. You don't know what people want until you put it out there. So if you have a sales page, split test the hell out of it. And let people tell you what they click on the most. So if you move the button around, if you change the title of the sales page, you know, does this version of the sales page get more clicks than this version of the sales page? You don't know until you actually test this stuff. So that's where you've got to get into the habit of testing everything. Split test everything. Um, if you don't know how to split test, 
I'm going to do a webinar on this. I'm also talking about it in the course. If you can't wait for the webinar. Lastly, five out of five. Hustle, also known as marketing. Um, hey guys, we are all here online tonight. Some of you are watching this on your PC. Some of you are watching your laptop and your tablet. Some of you I see are watching it on your phone. Fantastic. Technology is fantastic. You know what? But at the end of the day, you've got to get out there. Okay. And this is something that we, as the internet generation, and I'm not really the internet, I'm too old to be, let's face it, I'm on the wrong side of 40. I'm too old to be in the internet. You guys are in the internet generation. I'm way beyond that. I'm like TV generation, old school. But you guys are in the internet generation. You're all young kids and you grew up with the internet. Okay, and internet is really familiar with you. It's all there. You're used to this stuff, all right? But that's the problem because the answers aren't here. The answers are out there. Okay, and one of the big problems that I see with the entrepreneurs that I work with, in the mastermind, in the course, mentoring, investing, whatever, this is the biggest problem is that we get comfortable behind the screen. It's really comfortable. I can just kind of sit here, press some buttons on my computer screen, and that's my job, okay? But nothing will change until I get out there. What I want to talk about is this. Remember this as an entrepreneur. Everything is marketing. So you've got to get out there. Get out there and talk to customers. Have a cup of coffee with a customer or a potential customer. Have a cup of coffee. You know, buy a cup of coffee for somebody and say, hey, look, they could be somebody way more advanced than you, way more experienced than you. Or they could be somebody who's working on a similar project. Or they could be somebody who is a potential customer or somebody who's done something similar or somebody who's a developer. Hey, you know what? I'm going to be in your part of town next week. You got time for coffee? Coffee? I'll buy you a cup of coffee. I want to ask you a couple of questions about this project I'm working on. You know what? That is, is so valuable. That's the best investment of time and money you ever make. Okay? Get out there and hustle. Talk to people. Because you know what? As you're coming back from that meeting, sitting on the train, a light bulb will go on that you didn't get sitting behind the computer screen. So, you know what? As marketing, you've got to be driving everything. This is another mistake that marketers make. They don't have a goal for their marketing, right? You know, I haven't got, we don't have time to talk about the marketing funnel tonight because the marketing funnels is, is a really important thing that you've got to have in your business, all right? But everything you do, Every meetup you go to, every presentation you do, every business card you hand out, every cup of coffee you buy, whatever, every email you send, your goal is to get people on your mailing list. Hey guys, if you don't have a mailing list yet, may, do one thing. Do one thing after this meeting, after this webinar. Go and set up a mailing list because I, I, I promise you, that that will be the most valuable thing, the most valuable asset you'll ever have in your business. And you'll thank me a hundred times in the future. And you can buy me a cup of coffee. Because you know, I don't need anything else. So this is the most valuable thing you do. Mailing list. If you don't have a mailing list, go out and do it. And if you say to me, well, no, email's boring, you know, we're all into like Snapchat these days, or we're all into Facebook these days. No, no, no. The most effective way to sell today is email. Is always will be, always has been. Email is the most effective way to sell to people. So get people onto your mailing list, build trust and attention. If you were at last week's webinar, you will learn about the importance of trust and attention in marketing. Get people on your mailing list. Your goal of your business plan, get people onto your mailing list. And if you want to learn about mailing lists, warm the course. But now, just walk away with this idea that if you don't have a mailing list, that should be the number one goal. Get people onto your mailing list. As I see, your email list is your asset as well. Well done, I cost Cheers. Thanks for backing me up there. And your goal on that mailing list, forget about selling to people, educate and connect. Focus on educating and connecting people, okay? That's what you've got to do. Don't focus on selling people on the mailing list. Educate and connect. That's what your goal is. No matter what you're doing, if you've got a service, if you've got a consultancy, if you've got a product, you're all about educating and connecting people, not selling. Okay. And engaging. Conversation, build a conversation with these people. Trust and attention is what it's about. When you have trust attention, then you can sell. 
and you know what i talk about different ways that you can sell on mailing lists you know through autoresponders it's a little bit technical now but there's different types of autoresponders I talk about it on the course different types of autoresponders that you can use to sell these work these are fantastic sales tools you know what there's nothing better than waking up at seven in the morning as i do sometimes that's a lion for me usually i get up early because i go for a cycle ride but when I have a lie-in and I wake up at seven in the morning, first thing I do is look at my phone. You know what? Somebody's bought something from my mailing list. That is fantastic. You know, you want that kind of business. You want a business that makes money while you sleep. Most important thing you need is a mailing list. I'll show you how you can do that. Can't show you today. Just giving you the basics. Go out and sell up a mailing list. Mailchimp.com is a great place to start and build those relationships because that is where the profit of your business will come to. And you know what, as I said, beware the comfort zone, guys, sitting behind your computer. Go out and hustle, go out and sell. You know, apart from setting up your mailing list, what I want you to do is make a commitment next week to go out and talk to somebody. I don't know what it is. Talk to a stranger at a bus stop. No, don't do that. Go to a meetup. Go and talk to a potential customer. Go and talk to a potential partner. Do something. Step outside your comfort zone because honestly, that will be the most valuable hour that you invest your time in next week. And you know what? You'll spend another 50 or 60 hours working on your project. That one hour will be the most valuable. Okay. So what we do is we round up here in the five points that I sh shared with you tonight teach you that you need to go through to set up a business and then what i'll do is i'll give you a few ideas and then we'll go straight to q a about that okay so just rounding up here as i said tonight don't talk don't go looking for customers start with what you know okay i don't have time to go into it tonight but ecosystems are really important start with your existing relationships okay what i want to do is just kind of leave you with some final advice before we go to Q and A, okay? And that is, um, as I said, ecosystem. Let me just jump over here because where I'm aware of the time here. So finally, some final advice. Just I want to share this with you. As you've written your business plan, I want you to think about these things because these are really important and these are worth you know a lot of money and time saved for you. Just each one of these points I'm going to share with you in the next few minutes. So think about these. Your network is your success. You know what? The most important thing that you will do in the next few months, next few years as an entrepreneur is to build relationships with a network of like-minded entrepreneurs. When people say, you know, what is the number one thing that's going to make me successful? It's not hard work. It's not inspiration. It's not all those kind of things like passion, motivation I talked about earlier on. It's your network. Okay. And the number one thing. You may not understand the value of your network starting a business, but when you look back, you think, wow. That has been so important for me, not just in terms of people opening doors for you, but also ideas, people who kind of motivate you, lift you up. But the values that you keep as an entrepreneur are based on the people that you hang around with. All right. Your network is the most important thing for your success. So key to your plan as an entrepreneur is to surround yourself with good people. OK, don't you know, if you're surrounded by people who are saying to you, oh, you can't start a business. You know, you're in the wrong place. You need to surround you. Go out and find people that will help you. People who are entrepreneurs, people who are passionate about business. Go and find these people. Meetups, masterminds. You know, I've done a whole session on this in the webinar. Don't compete. People say, you know, I'm a business. I need to compete. Avoid competition like, like the plague. Okay, avoid competition. Don't compete. Do everything you can to avoid competition at this early stage. Don't have a lot to talk about this. Just take it as that's what you need to do at this early stage, all right? Embrace failure as part of what you need to do. You're going to fail a hundred times, a thousand times before you hit your success. So be prepared to do that. You know, if you don't like failing, if you don't like making mistakes, you're in the wrong place. You shouldn't be in business. But this is failure is key to becoming a successful business person. And you know the other thing? Not only embracing failure, but also being in it for the long term. I think one of the problems we have as entrepreneurs is we expect immediate results, all right? We want everything right now.
but you look at these people who are really successful, and you think, wow, they just kind of overnight success. It's so untrue. You know, every overnight success, as they say, took a, a lifetime to build, all right? It's the long, hard road to overnight success. You've got to be in this for the long term. You know, you are, if you get successful very, very quickly, you are very, very lucky. You're in a very, very small percentage of entrepreneurs. Most entrepreneurs take a long time to become successful. So you have to prepare for that. And the two ways you're going to prepare for that is one, you have to expect it. So, you know, if you need results by December, you know, good luck to you. you. You might do it. You can launch for it. You know, in my course, I teach you how you can launch in four weeks. All right. You could do it. It's possible. But, you know, you're not going to retire by December. That's pretty, pretty difficult. Less than 1%, less than 0.1%. Very, very difficult. So expect it's going to take a long time. Don't worry. Just be, you know, if you don't become a millionaire by the time you're 30, chill. It's okay. You know, it doesn't matter. If you're, if you're having fun and making money, it's cool. All right. And the second thing is build a business that doesn't require you to become profitable real quick. So, you know, if you go out and get a team, if you go out and get an office, a lawyer, a PR company, design websites, get a logo, all that kind of stuff, then all you're doing is you're increasing your burn time and shortening the time that you have to become successful. So, you know, if you get rid of all that stuff, you can take weeks, months to become successful and get it right. You know, you reduce all the pressure that you have on yourself as an entrepreneur. And this is what I, you know, the final piece of advice tonight, guys, is this. Oh no, final, penultimate, last but one. Do something every day that scares you. Okay. This webinar scares me a little bit because, you know, I don't know if you guys are sitting there laughing at me. Thinking, Who is this idiot? You know, it's kind of you've got to put yourself out there, right? You've got to you've got to go out and do this stuff. Put yourself into the wild, all right? Do something every day that scares you. You will be successful. I guarantee it. Whatever it is, do something. You know, publish a blog post where you think, oh, should I do that? I'm not sure. Hit publish. Go out to a meetup. Do every you know do something every day. That should be part of your plan. And lastly, if it doesn't make your heart beat faster, don't do it. You know. I hear a lot of entrepreneurs give me ideas and I, you know, we have this list of ideas. This is one of the stress test questions. Does it make your heart beat faster? Do you know what I guarantee? If it doesn't make your heart beat faster, that won't become a successful business. You know, when you think about this business idea that you're working on, seriously, do you feel your heart beat faster? Because your heart won't lie. Do you get excited about that? You know, you wake up in the morning really motivated to do this stuff. If you're not beating faster when you think about that idea, it's going to be really hard for you to impress customers. It's going to be really hard for you to get people to work on this project, you know, developers, whatever, your team. Don't do it. So, hey, guys, look, wow, 58 minutes. Have we got time? We've got already some questions coming in. So let's do it. Q&A session, guys. If you have any questions, hit me with them. So what I'll do is I'll try and answer your questions now. There's already some questions about what we talked about. Um, you stick around to the end. I'm going to give you uh, uh, an audio file you can download as well, take away. So let's do the questions because we've got some time, guys. We've gone really long tonight. Um, Akos, hey, Akos, how you doing? Hello, Budapest, Hungary. Thanks for coming tonight. Really good to see you here again. I know you come all the time. Brilliant to have you here. Your question. How about copying successful businesses from a different industry or location? That is the way to do it. Because you know what? You can take an idea that works in a different country and import that idea into your country. Is that what you're talking about? That is a great way to build a business because you know what you're doing is you're working with arbitrage. Arbitrage is basically differences between markets, which you know, happen because of geography or language or culture. And arbitrage is an opportunity for entrepreneurs. You see, what makes a good entrepreneur is somebody who can see through borders. You know, so for example, in Hungary, they may say, yeah, yeah, that's never going to work here because we're Hungarian. We don't do that. You know what an entrepreneur would do is like all the people that came here tonight, you share so much in common because you're all on this journey together. You have more in common than people 
than you have in common with people in your own country. And that's the power of the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur can look at an idea from a different country and say, that's going to work here. And you're in a fantastic position. If you bridge to markets, you're in an amazing position. You know why? Because you can see what works in another market, maybe a different language, and think, wow, I can bring that here. And that's going to work. Somebody has spent a lot of time and money making that model successful in a different market. Bring it over here. You've got to change, but that whole idea is totally going to work in your market. If you can kind of adapt it to your market, you know, a great example of that to think about as an analogy, analogy of your business, Akos, is Starbucks. So here in Japan, when Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks, came to Japan, and he had already built Starbucks in America and a few places in Europe. He came to Japan. The Japanese consultants, who local Japanese people said, hey, you know what? Starbucks will not work in Japan. And here's two reasons why Starbucks will not work in Japan. One, Japanese people drink tea. Two, Japanese people like to smoke in coffee or in tea shops, right? So Starbucks is not going to work in Japan. And Howard Schultz said, screw you. Starbucks is going to work in Japan because I'm not selling coffee. And we talked about it in the last webinar, right? It's not about coffee, it's about space. He went into Japan, took the idea from America, slightly changed it. You know, the menu's different a little bit in Japan than it is to America, but it's still Starbucks. It's still the green sign. It's still the you know, the same furniture, slightly different, but it's still Starbucks. Starbucks Japan is the most profitable Starbucks in the world. Now, if Howard Schultz had listened to the people that said, hey, this ain't going to work here in Japan, it would be a totally different story. But now it did. He didn't listen, he went in there. So to answer your question, Akos, yeah, copy an idea from a different industry or a different market and bring it to your own country. Slightly change it, great. You've de-risked the whole process, okay? But slightly changing it is really important, okay? You've got to get it right, local flavor. So whatever your business, get the local menu, so to speak, for the Hungarian market, okay? I see you've got the second question, so I'm going to try and answer that now. Um, is it risky to ask for 10 bucks as the 10 by 10 test when you plan when you plan to when your plan is to sell your service for a thousand bucks no all right let me explain so Akos is asking me about the 10 by 10 hack which I talked about in a previous webinar which is basically where you go out and pitch 10 people 10 you know to sign up for ten dollars for your product because if you can get somebody to pay one dollar or ten dollar you know that's the biggest step up that they can make as a customer from zero to one. The difference between zero to one is bigger than the difference between one and a thousand dollars. All right, to get somebody to pay even one dollar is a challenge. So he's asking me, you know, let's say his idea for a business is to sell for a thousand dollars. Should I go out and pitch people for ten at the starting point? Um, absolutely yes, because the people you're going to pitch at stage one are your inner circle, your your ecosystem. And you as long as you get the pitch right, it's okay, it's cool. Because your pitch to them, as you've experienced already, is hey look, you know, you're gonna help me build this product, this service, okay? And as a as recognition of that, I'm gonna charge you only ten dollars. I don't need your ten dollars. You know, don't insult me. I don't need ten dollars, right? But I want you to pay ten dollars because I want your commitment. Because if you pay ten dollars, it shows me you're serious. And what I'll do is, if you join this service for ten dollars or this product, buy this product for ten dollars and give me your feedback. That's cool. You can have that for life for ten dollars. But everybody else, I'm going to charge a thousand dollars. Okay. So absolutely, yeah. To answer your question, is it risky to ask for ten bucks? as the 10 by 10 test when your plan is to sell your service for a thousand dollars. Absolutely not. It's not risky at all because you're going to get a lot of feedback and 
those people that are going to pay a thousand dollars in the future you, you are starting from a pretty strong point okay because you've worked with these guys who paid ten dollars you've got a lot of feedback you've tested the product you know you could spend here's the challenge if you wanted to charge a thousand dollars for your product you would probably take a lot longer to get it right you wouldn't launch that product in a matter of days right you would take months maybe a year to develop that product because there's a lot of pressure on you to get that right. It's a $1,000, dollars i have got to get this right. So you'd spend a year developing it, you launch it, again, it's like the donut. You didn't like pink, not interested. But if you start a lot earlier and you just charge $10, you, know, you can build that up with all that feedback. You can then go to the people who you want to charge $1,000 and you've got all this kind of really useful insight about the product, what people like, what people didn't like, and so on. So I think the risk, to answer your question, is to not do that. Does that make sense? The risk is to launch something for $1,000 without testing it before, right? So I hope that answers your question. It's sort of the opposite of maybe what you asked, but maybe you think that already you just kind of wanted confirmation. Yeah. Well, you asked me about too small an amount. Well, any amount makes sense. I mean, you know, you're not going to ask them for 0.1 dollar. Be serious. A ten dollar, an amount that kind of you know, like people might think, oh, I can't be bothered to pay ten dollars. But ten, whatever, any amount is fine. You, you decide. It doesn't really matter at this stage. You can work it out, all right? All right, guys. All right, we've gone really long on time, well over an hour. So I'm not sure if we've got any more time to ask questions, but that's cool. Um, you know what I want to do is just before we round up, two things. Firstly, um, I said I'd give you a uh there you go look i've set it up audio file so if you missed the audio file some of you got it already because you signed up early some of you didn't get it but um can you see that on the right hand side down at the bottom there's it just says five things audio go and download that because that's got like a 10 minute summary of the five things as a reminder of what we talked about today the five things that, that you need to have in your business plan is 10 minutes audio file Stick it on your smartphone, stick it on your MP3 player, listen to that for 10 minutes and just remind yourself, because you've done an hour with me tonight, that 10 minutes will remind you what you need to look at. And that's what it's about, okay? Just keep this momentum going. Hey, cool. You really made me work hard tonight. And you asked me some tough questions. Well, of course, asked me some tough questions. Good on you, man. Thanks a lot for that. Um, yeah, cool. So thank you very much. What I'm going to do now, everybody that attended will get an email. Let me just tell you what's in the email. Um, first of all, what's coming up next week, uh, I'll give you a preview of the next webinar so you can get in there first and register a place first because spaces are limited. Um, so that's next week, next week's webinar. That will be in the email. Um, also, if you're interested in the course, uh, I'll send you information about the course, everything we talked about today. If you are interested in learning more about idea validation, learning more about MVP development, stress testing of ideas, learning more about customer profiling. Today was just the beginning, but if you're interested more in that, check out the course. Go and click on the page and have a look at it and see what you think. If it, you think it's right for you, if you think you could benefit from learning this stuff online because there's about 50 videos there's a whole bunch of stuff in there not just the webinars a whole bunch of stuff where hopefully you can you know challenge some of your assumptions learn a bit about this way of doing business the zero to one method and get some ideas you know and key here is we can get you launching your business sooner we can reduce the risk reduce the money that you spend on the business and reduce the time that you, you spend like planning get it out there have a look at the course if you like it, um, yeah, click on the page, go for it. There's an offer in there as well. So you're going to get an email with an offer in it. Check it out. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Japan. Thank you, Hungary. Thank you, Indonesia. Thank you, Hong Kong. Thank you, UK. Love you all. I will see you next week. Look out for my email. Anything else, just reply to the email. I will read every single email. Sorry. Thank you, Slovenia. How dare I? <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Missed that one. I haven't checked my my participants list since you came in. All right. So check out the email. Anything else? Just hit the reply. Let me know any feedback. 
Um, if you want to talk about your business, happy to talk about it with you. Tell me a little bit about your business in your email. And you know, as I said, I will look at and answer every single email that lands in my inbox. And I look forward to seeing you guys all next week. Have a great evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. See you Thursday. Have a good one.